Okay, good uh, afternoon. So, uh, we are continuing these courses. This morning, just if I can summarize very easily, one of the problems was that we had a system. I can add also the noise. We had uh, told about uh, impulse response. We have told about input. We have told about output and the error. And so uh, what I am going to do in a, about 30 minutes today uh, is talking about convolution and deconvolution a little more in detail than what we did uh, this morning. So we have this uh, system and uh, I remember just that if we know uh, F, if we know H and we want to find G, this is forward problem. Uh, we talked about this that for this we do not have any particular difficulty and we told about uh, identification which is when I know the input and the output and I want to find impulse response this we called identification problem and uh, the inversion or the convolution was when we know uh, H and G and we want to find F and this was uh, called inversion or in this particular case deconvolution. Uh, we can write for uh, all of this, for this one the uh, equation is G equal to HF plus epsilon and uh, we could see this morning that if this model, this is the, the forward model, uh, if we use the Fourier transform, this model can also be written as g of omega equal to h of omega f of omega and so uh, plus e of omega and so for this forward problem no difficulty for the identification we told that okay we may use this expression to find h of omega which is g of omega divided by f of omega plus the term of error which is e of omega divided by f of omega and uh, if this can be done if f of omega is not zero then this can be done and in that case we can think at a very naive method that gives here inverse Fourier transform and obtain H of T. And the same here, if we use the same equation, we can see that F of omega can be written as G of omega over H of omega plus E of omega divided by, by H of omega. And again, if h of omega is not equal to zero, and we can compute this again by inverse Fourier transform, we can obtain f of t. So you can say that, okay, finally these two problems that I say that they are difficult, uh, mathematically we have the expressions, so there is not any problem. Uh, as I mentioned, the difficulties becomes in the cases that you cannot uh, ensure that f of omega is equal to zero or h of omega, uh, h of omega is uh, not equal to zero. So this is, uh, say, the... As you can see, in all these uh, expressions, here I wrote the things in 
integral equations. Let me rewrite this integral equation, which is integral of f of t prime h of t minus t prime d t prime. And uh, uh, so uh, here we wrote everything as a function operator. So we can also write this g of t is equal to h, operator h, f of t plus epsilon of t, always. Uh, now let do numerical computation. And to do numerical, all these equations are written mathematically. And if you want to do numerical computation, it means that everything here are sampled, and you have access to the samples. You have sampled the input, the output, and you have the samples of these data as the numerical values which are in the computer, and you want to do numerical computation. Let's just uh, talk about the steps of discretization. It means that this integral equation that we have there, we want to do numerical computation. So we are going to sample everything. Uh, we are assuming that delta t, delta t, which is the sampling uh, uh, sampling interval is one, one microsecond or one millisecond or one hour, it doesn't matter. And uh, we are also assuming that we are noting that g of k, uh, g of m times delta t, we are noting this gm. And uh, we will do the same thing for the other things, f of n times delta t we are noting Fn, the same for H, H of K delta T, we are noting is HK. And uh, one of the steps before doing numerical computation is replace this integral equation by a numerical uh, expression. It is not very complicated to see that from that integral equation, we can write that GM, is equal to, integral becomes the sum, summation over what? Summation is over t prime, t prime is k, so sum over k, okay? And then we have f, fn, and then we have uh, uh, h, uh, we can remember that we can also change the place of f and h, okay? So if, uh, if I can rewrite here that we can change the place of f and t, we can also write h of t prime, f of t minus t prime, t t prime, okay? And so here we can write this, uh, this uh, expression as hk, let me write it, f of n minus k. Can everybody see this from those equations? And uh, so plus epsilon m. So we are going to assume that m and x m goes from the time zero up to m delta t, zero up to m. And uh, we are assuming that impulse response, we are making a hypothesis, an assumption that the impulse response of the system is uh, support limited. So we are assuming that h of t is equal to zero when we are outside of some intervals, okay? So for example, we can say that when t is less than and when t is uh, less than uh, q delta t, and when t is uh, more than p delta t. So in that case, this summation goes from p 
uh, from minus excuse me, minus q to p. If we assume that the system is causal, a causal system, everybody knows what is a causal system, when h of t is equal to 0 for t negative. h of t is equal to 0 for t negative, sorry. This is a causal system, so in that case k is equal to 0 to p. And we have this equation. What is, uh, what I am trying to do here is just to write the equations in a very simple way that you can do numerical computation. So we are going to assume this, this hypothesis, even if it is not really necessary, but it is uh, more simple to do. So here I put this to zero. And uh, it is very uh, interesting to see that if I put all the elements of the vector, all the elements of G in a vector, G0 up to Gm, and if I put all the elements of F also here somewhere, F, I, I will write it a little later, F, here is G, and here it is not very difficult to see that we have a matrix. It is very easy to see that if we start by m equal to 0, what we have, what we will have here. If we start m equal to 0, k going to 0 up to p, it is not very difficult to write the first line. Uh, can you help me what, what I have to write here? And we assumed here, we, we assume that uh, we are going to make one more assumption. We are going also to assume that input is causal. Causal input, which means that we are assuming also that f of t is also equal to 0 for t negative. These two assumptions will help uh, to write more easily. It, they are not necessary. Huh? Just uh, as an example, I am going to, to write it. But if not, it is not necessary. In that case, it is not very complicated to see that G0 is only H0, F0, and that's all. Plus, epsilon, yeah, epsilon 0. Do you agree with me? If we do these two assumptions, the only elements which stays in this equation is this. And if you write this for m equal to 1, you will see that you will have here h1, h0, and again 0. Here is f1, and go on up to fm, like here. And uh, actually it is very easy to write all the other lines because each time m equal to 0, m equal to 1, m equal to 2, you go. And uh, you will see that you will arrive at here hp, here h0. You are going to follow this h0 up to the end. And uh, here, you are going to follow sorry, HP, uh, H1 here, and so on. And here you have 0 everywhere, and here you will have 0 everywhere. And so, and so the equation is very easy to write, G equal to G is equal to H F plus epsilon. When I put a bar uh, on behind, it means this is a vector. And so, uh, if I want to solve the first problem, forward problem, in the forward problem, I have the input. I know the input. 
I know all the elements of the input. So F0 up to Fn, I know the vector F. I know all the elements of H in pulse response. If I know H0 up to Hp, H0 up to Hp, which are here, I can make this matrix. And then it is very easy. I know F, I know the matrix H, and I can do just matrix multiplied by the vector, and it is all. So the forward problem, actually we can do it in this way that I, I wrote. But uh, can you, did you remark that this matrix is a very special matrix? Somebody knows the name of this kind of matrix? Toplitz? Have you, have you heard about the Toplitz matrix? This is a Toplitz matrix. It means that a Toplitz matrix is a matrix where each line is obtained from the previous lines just by going to the right. And uh, just by going to the right. And uh, if you know the first line and the first column of the matrix, you know the whole matrix. Okay? And so all the diagonal elements are the same in a Toplitz matrix. So Toplitz is equivalent to convolution. This H of T minus T prime, T prime is characteristic function of convolution. And when discretized, this Toplitz matrix is characteristic function of this convolution operator. And uh, so, if you know H, in, if you know F, it is very easy to make this matrix and do this convolution. Uh, this matrix can be, can be constructed very easily. In MATLAB, you have a conv matrix, conv MTX, which, is, uh, which makes you this kind of the matrix, and you can do the operation. Now, uh, if, I, if I want to solve the third problem, if I want to solve the third problem, what do I have to do? We have G equal to H F plus Epsilon. I know H. If this matrix was invertible, the problem was almost solved. If there was not error, if Epsilon was zero, let me write it here. If Epsilon was equal to zero, no noise. And if the matrix H was invertible, this is the case, at least what is the size of this matrix? It's M plus 1 by M plus 1 in this case. So it is a, 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 a square matrix. If it was invertible, then uh, it would be easy because we could compute F equal to H minus 1 G, and the problem was solved. But the difficulty that we had before, actually we are going to find it here, this difficulty. Can somebody tell me what is the condition that this matrix be vertical? Uh, do you know about the the rank of the matrix, and do you know about the determinant of a matrix? This matrix is very a special matrix, which is a triangular, uh, lower triangular matrix. And so the determinant of this matrix is H0 power M plus 1. Everybody follows? No? Uh, do you know uh, about uh, the conditions that must satisfy a matrix to be invertible. In what conditions a matrix is invertible? We, we say that the matrix is, will be invertible if the determinant is different to zero. This is one of the conditions. Or if the different lines or different columns are independent from each other. If you have find one of the lines which can be written as a linear combination of the other lines, matrix is not invertible. So
So let examine this case. Let examine this case. For this particular matrix, the determinant of this matrix is H0 power M minus 1. M minus 1 because this is the size of the matrix. And H0, what is H0? H0 is the first sample of the impulse response of the system. What is, you have the system, you put an impulse at the input, and you look at the output, what is going to happen. Very often, very often the systems are such that when you put impulse at the input, the output starts to go up and then go down. So it starts to go up, so it means that the first sample may be very near to zero. If it is not zero, very near to zero means that the determinant of this matrix is very close to zero. And in that case, even if mathematically it is invertible, we say that this matrix is ill-conditioned. So this is one of the, one of the difficulties of ill-posedness, ill-posedness, ill-posed when, when the problem in analytical form is ill-posed, when you discretized the system, then you will be faced to ill-conditioned ill-conditioned matrices. If the problem is really posed, the matrix may, be not, may not be invertible. Uh, somebody knows about the rank of a matrix? We say that a matrix is full rank if all the eigenvalues are uh, different to zero. Okay? And uh, if, uh, if a matrix is full rank, it is invertible also. So these are the, the points that it is necessary that we know about this. So uh, for now, just we say that, okay, this, uh, this uh, ideal case will never, uh, will never happen. And in particular, if uh, these conditions are not verified, that I wrote here, the matrix even will not be uh, uh, a square. The number of the lines and the number of the columns will differ. It will be rectangular. And if the matrix is rectangular, then we cannot even write at all this relation. So don't think that the sample methods that I mentioned, the difficulties which are there when we discretize the problem, still these difficulties stays but here we were talking about Fourier transform functions. Here we are linear algebra. But again, the explanation why the problem is difficult is there. Okay? So uh, now let me also write the equations for the second uh, problem. The same equation which is here, if I change that, if I change the place of f and h. <coughs> We could change the place of f and h. Uh, and the same equation can be also written as g0 up to gm. And this time, this time you want to, the unknown is h for the second problem, identification. The unknown is h, so I am going to put here h. I can write it uh, uh, either H0 to HP uh, or I can write it HP up to H0, no problem. And it is uh, very easy also to, to write this, uh, this uh, system 